definitive Fender amplifier is a blackface amp from the mid 60s. Really loud, really clean with a very scooped mid-range response. And we have plenty of blackface models in the Axe FX 3. One thing that I didn't know until researching for this video was that a lot of these amps share the same preamp circuit, the AB763 circuit. So if you see those things pop up when you're reading about vintage fenders, it's just a circuit designation. I will put a link to a great article in the video description that I was reading about where it's basically like, yeah, you know what, a uh, deluxe reverb and a twin and a tremolux and a uh, vibroverb from this era. They're essentially the same preamp circuit married to a different power section and a diff different set of speakers and a different speaker cabinet size. So that's pretty interesting, which is cool because it makes this video a lot easier to digest. Most of the tips and tricks that we do on these amps can be applied across the board because they're essentially the same circuit. So uh, most of these amps, the difference between like a Tweed era version of these amps, say the Tweed Deluxe and a Blackface Deluxe Reverb is going to come down to uh, there's negative feedback, there's a different phase inverter, and there's a couple of other very small uh, tweaks like the tone stack and things like that. So yeah, without nerding out too much about it, I will leave that to the experts and post that link for you guys to check out. I'm playing my YJM Strat at the moment. I've got the Deluxe Reverb model dialed up and I've got this York Audio Deluxe Reverb IR and this is what it sounds like with the drive at six, bass at two, mid at three and treble at six. So it's a perfect edge breakup tone there straight away. Um, someone did make the point last time, these uh, are what I would consider the Magic 6 settings on a Fender amp, but two things to consider. Uh, these old Fenders go to 12, which is too louder in it. So really, if you wanted to have, you know, bass two, middle three, treble six, and be authentic, it's gotta be two out of 12. So uh, what's that, like one sixth, and then three out of 12, so one quarter. So you gotta bring all these values down slightly if you wanna be authentic, but they're meant to be a starting point fine-tune them for your guitar and you know just 6236 I think is fine on a lot of these models so let's just scroll through with this same IR that is the deluxe reverb model let's have a listen to the double verb so this will be the twin same settings So, a lot brighter, a lot less breakup. Uh, this would have been a higher powered amp, so there's less power amp distortion going on at these settings. That's the twin. Uh, let's go to the, what's next, probably the Princeton. So this, couple of different changes there, uh, and this was a much lower wattage amp. Let's have a listen to it though at the same settings. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's uh, It's not as bright as the twin and it's a little bit more compressed and a little bit sort of nicer to play under the fingers. Uh, we'll move on through these blackface amps. The What's next? The Super Reverb. Ooh, I really, really like this one. We're going to spend a bit of this time, a uh, bit of time on this one in a bit. So let's hear it first. <laughs> That's really nice. Uh, I totally forgot to mention the second thing earlier as well, is that a lot of these amps don't have a mid-range control. So that's the, the second thing. The Magic 6 settings, if you want to be super authentic, go to scale the values uh, out of 12 instead of out of 10. And then uh, we'll come back to this issue of the mid-range control uh, because essentially, 
we've got more control in here. So it's a case of, do you want to be authentic or do you want to dial in a good guitar tone? I like having the mid control there, but let's move on. Super Reverb sounds really, really great. A little bit more grit, a little bit more compressed, feels really, really good. This is the Tremolux. Let's have a listen to it. I'll uh, bring the relevant amp settings up as well. That's got a di slightly different character again. I don't like the, it's a little bit cleaner and I don't know, this one out of all of them uh, is really, really good for super clean stuff, but not so much for sort of funk or rock stuff. And then the Vibroverb, let's have a listen to, there's a couple of different Vibroverb models. We've got the AA, meaning the AA763 circuit, and then there's an AB one and then there's a custom one, but let's just try the AA one. I'll just bring the mids down a little bit here. Uh, let's have a listen to this guy. Immediately, I really like the way that's breaking up. Um, no surprise that Stevie Ray Vaughan like the Vibroverb, right? And then finally, the Bassman, which uh, I think has a slightly different circuit in there, but we'll set at the Magic 6 settings again. I think they're set there. Uh, again, if you're a Marshall guy like me, Bassman equals JDM45. So, you know, they're pretty much the same thing, but uh, let's have a listen to it just to compare it. We'll come back to this guy in its own right. <laughs> That's wicked. I really, really dig that one as well. It's a lot brighter. It's a lot more aggressive. So we'll come back around to the basement model. But uh, you could hear there that in one way, they all have their own kind of unique character, but it kind of is the same underlying tone. There's not a huge amount of variation. It's not like the difference between changing between, you know, like a Marshall JCM 800 and a you know, freaking Mesa Boogie dual rectifier or something like that. It's still got that bass tone in there with sort of subtlety. So rather than go through every amp and tweak them, I'm going to pick a couple of my favorite models from here and just play around with them. And you can apply these tips and tricks to your favorite model. So uh, basically just do this, set all the amps up the same and go through them with the same guitar. Uh, you can even play a loop and have a listen back to it and just find the amp model that suits your guitar and your playing style the best and then try apply these tweaks. So out of all of those, I love the deluxe reverb. I really like the super reverb and I really like the vibroverb. And it's a, uh, yeah, it's a kind of hard pick for me between all of those. But um, I was gonna do the Vibroverb, but as I said earlier, I'm gonna go and do the Super Reverb because this one is pretty cool. I did a video with this guy uh, last week just playing some bluesy kind of stuff and a lot of people liked it and asked for the patch. So I'll show you what I did. Okay, the mid-range control thing is the first thing that I wanna cover. So uh, essentially in the Blackface Fender tone stack, there's a fixed resistor for the mid-range. So if you wanted to adjust your mids, You'd have to mod the amp more or less. And uh, this one website I was reading, apparently it's like if you set the mid resistor to about 68%, that gives you that classic kind of Fender scoop thing. So I'll just play around with the mid range control and show you guys how much it changes the character of the distortion and sort of the compression and things like that. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna twist, twist the knob as we do. We'll start at minimum and bring it up and try to find the sweet spot with this guitar. <laughs> So it kind of gets a bit woofy with it all the way up and it sounded a bit just characterless at lower settings. So I'll just turn that treble back. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at about 60 or 70%. That seems to be a pretty good place. And turn the treble up. And with the Super Reverb, if you want a kind of blues tone, I'll grab a guitar with humbuckers in a second. Just turn the input drive all the way up. Um, this, is, this simulates turning the amp all the way up. And then you can use your volume and tone controls to get everything else. And you don't really need any pedals. And it sounds incredible. All the way up.
Oh, this is such a lovely amp to play around with. Um, I'll grab my STR with humbuckers. <laughs> And you can hear just by changing the volume control, you can uh, affect a lot of change in the overall distortion character. You don't really need pedals for that kind of bluesy thing, which is awesome. So, uh, yeah, I mean, basically use the bass and treble to fine tune this to your guitar and the input drive to get the amount of crunch that you use. But uh, one approach is just crank everything up. Uh, sorry, crank the drive up and then use your volume control to do the rest. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, let's have a listen to a similar thing with the vibroverb. Uh, because I really like the way that sounded as well. I'll just turn the mid-range up and I'll crank everything up. And this is a pretty awesome classic rock sound as well. And if you try this with a 412 IR, let me bring one up. Uh, I'll bring it up over here. I know Factory 2, this is gonna seem like heresy to some of you guys, but a 4x12 Mesa cab. One that I really like is this uh, York Audio Recto one. What is that, Factory 2, number 842? It sounds like this, it sounds amazing. <laughs> It's kind of got a bit of that Soundgarden, uh, bad motor finger, super unknown thing going on about it with a V30 loaded 412. So that's super fun if you're into character tones for rock stuff. And uh, obviously with all of these amps, you can play around with different IRs. But yeah, the Vibroverb's awesome. Uh, any of these Fender amps are really awesome with a humbucker style guitar. Really quickly, let's go to the Bassman. I know I'm all over the place with these. Uh, uh, where's the basement? Scene one, I think I've got it. And essentially the way I would set this guy up is what I would refer to as like plexi style, basically uh, mids all the way up, treble all the way up, bass low, and yeah, input drive kind of where it is. And it, it with the greenback IR, let me find a greenback IR now. Uh, it's definitely got a sort of JTM 45 plexi kind of character going on. Uh, let's see, I see pre-roller down here. Let's just do this one. I think it's greenbacks. So let's have a listen. <laughs> That's pretty ratty and pretty bright. Maybe if I try a one, two, one IR instead. Uh, let's try this. Uh, it's not quite as tight as like a plexi style amp, but then again, neither is the JTM 45. So that's how I like to use the Blackface Bassman. Uh, let me grab a Strat again and we'll go over to the Vibroverb and we'll try to do a Stevie Ray style thing. Okay, so be kind on me. I'm gonna try and play some Stevie style stuff. We'll go over to this Oxford speaker. Uh, I can't remember what speakers Stevie used, maybe JBLs or something like that with his Vibroverb. But there is a cool trick that I picked up and he would often run two amps at the same time, but you can kind of get a similar vibe with one amp. I tried this on my AX8. 
And I'm totally stealing this from Tyler Grun's video, so go and watch his video on dialing in a Stevie Ray Vaughan style sound. But basically, you want a Tube Screamer up the front end, you want a Strat style guitar, and with this vibroverb, I'll just crank the input drive and we'll make one little tweak. I think it's in the power section uh, with the transformer match. So I don't know if this is like confirmed or a rumor, but apparently Stevie would use basement transformers in his vibroverb. So basically, just turn the transformer match up. Uh, I'll leave it at one and we'll chuck a tube screamer in front of this guy with a drive pedal. Uh, we just go for T808, pretty simple. Drive down, let's turn the tone right up and the level right up. Let's just have a listen to the amp on its own. Then with the pedal, then I'll play around with the transformer match. That's pretty cool. I can't play like Stevie Ray Vaughan to save my life, but it's kind of ballpark. So, uh, and it's definitely got that vibroverb thing going on that a lot of people like. So turning the transformer match up, uh, playing around with the negative feedback, I find turning it up a little bit just gives you a little bit more kind of uh, in the low end with this stuff, especially on the bridge pickup. <laughs> And that, uh, man, that gets me going as well. So that's pretty fun. The, uh, you know, if you know what you're doing and you get the right IR, you can get a lot closer to that kind of sound. Or uh, alternatively, you can do what the Axe Effects is great for and use that as a basis to craft the sound in your head, you know, to find your own guitar sound. So love the vibroverb. I love the deluxe reverb. Um, one other cool thing with these amps, I'll just uh, use this setting, but turn the input drive down a bit. So this is the raw guitar sound. <laughs> And what you can do is, I've got this block in here. I've got, um, so a lot of people love the Analog Man King of Tone. I know like Kenny Wayne Shepherd uses one and a whole bunch of other guys. I have a pedal called the Gain of Tones by Anarchy Audio that essentially is like a Prince of Tone uh, double up sort of thing. So it's a little bit of a riff on the King of Tone thing. And I have been able to get really close to the green side of that pedal, so the low gain side, uh, with, I think it's a blues, blues breaker block in here. Yeah, the blues OD, so, and yeah, basically I just match my gain of tones at the settings that I like in this block. Uh, and if you see here, it's basically the blues OD, tone all the way off, because it's a super bright pedal, uh, drive around, what, two, three, uh, level just above noon, uh, messed around with the graphic EQ a little bit to sort of match the tone of the pedal. I'm not interested in that, iCloud. And uh, yeah, I think I changed the clip type to Germanium or something, or maybe it's already Germanium. But uh, when you kick this in, this is awesome in front of any of these blackface amps as well. And I'll, um, I'll try to remember to hit save on this preset and upload it for you guys so that you can play around with it too. It does this. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's, that feels pretty awesome as well, and it cleans up okay. I wouldn't say it cleans up great, but you can just turn the drive block off and turn your volume control down as well to get a bit more of that stuff going on. Uh, in the last video that we did on the brown face amps, I played around with a bit of tremolo and a bit of spring reverb. So you can go and watch that video and those settings because obviously some of these amps had tremolo and spring reverb. So to sort of summarize at this point, it's uh, you know the AB763 circuit. Most of these amps uh, are covered by that. So a lot of these same settings applied. So I guess the blackface models are fairly consistent in the way that you set them, but each model does have its own characteristics coming from the power section. And of course the IR choice that you make to go along with it. And uh, stacking, you know, I only did two drives here, but the Blues OD and the Tube Scream are really great into these amps. And uh, yeah, basically just find the amp model that you like the most out of all these fenders uh, that suits your guitar and a decent IR. There's plenty of good stock factory IRs as well, but I really like this Oxford IR uh, from the York Audio Pack that I use all the time. So that's why I've gone with that. Um, I know a bunch of you guys will be like, hey, what stock IR should I use? Well, that's part of the fun. Go away and play around with it. And uh, yeah, I, hopefully that's kind of illuminating on uh, what's going on there. The Magic 6 thing and tweaking out the mid-range is pretty cool. Uh, what else did we cover as well? I feel like there was things that I missed. Anyway, I'm starting to get rambling. Uh, these are so much fun to play guitar with. So I would stress, just find a model that you like and plug your guitar in, kind of use the you know starting points of bass at two, middle either at three for a really clean thing or up around six for a slightly crunchier thing, treble at six, drive around six. Uh, you can either stack pedals in front of it or use your guitar volume control to tweak it out. And yeah, go and play guitar and have some fun and enjoy the fact that we have like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of vintage equipment just sitting here in this magic box. I hope you guys have found the video useful. If you've got any comments or anything you would like to add, please let me know in the comment section. I can always revisit this in a follow-up video if there's anything that you feel that I missed. And I'm more than happy to do that. Until then, you guys stay excellent and I'll see you all around real soon.